So once again, it's me, your boy, the man, NJ, to the city with the number two in TL. God first, God bless, once again, ashamed. So once again, I really want to make this video about um, the um, debate last night. I can assure you my number one opinion about it is that absolutely the debate was overall trash. Um, and it definitely, you know, I wouldn't say we learned anything new from it, quite honestly. You know, a few people might take a few sound bites here and there and say we learned a lot. But ladies and gentlemen, I think that a big part of what this election is going gonna, is gonna to go down to is literally like what 2016 election went down to. The lesser of the two evils. You know, do you want somebody that's been in politics for so long and you know depending on what you value within their 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 track record you're like they ain't did anything you know reasonable or meaningful versus you know f you know eight more years of you know of you know i want to say manageableism because i once i made that word up <laughs> But I think you want you gotta understand like I'm an independent and I want everybody to understand I'm a, I'm an independent you know and uh, I really want people people to understand I try to God first see both sides of every angle every puzzle every situation and you know and I can play devil's advocate sometimes depending on who it is where it is what it is and so on and so on but I definitely want people to totally understand you know the last night's debate was well yeah it was halfway garbage if not fully garbage you know it really does show you and I wouldn't even say say it shows you the ugly side of politics. It just literally shows you how even at their age, in in their seventies, like what um, like what um, like like what um, like what Twitter was saying. This is the a debate of two seventy year olds, you know, going at it, you know, arguing like a bunch of you know seventy year olds or whatever. I mean, it all depends on it all depends on what you want to take from this last night's debate, you know, um. I ain't gonna lie, most of it has literally left my mind where I really don't even know what to say about it anymore. Um, but if I could say anything about it, I would say, uh, I want people to totally understand, especially when it comes to uh, global warming, climate change. I literally made two videos about this already. Uh, God bless uh, my girl, Danielle O'Toole, uh, Trey Joe. Um, pretty sure that's how you pronounce her new last name. She's married now. God bless her soul. Um, one of my favorite softball players of all time. Um, God bless her. Uh, she went to San Diego State and transferred to Arizona for her final two years of eligibility. Uh, and God bless her. She was in the Athletes Unlimited uh, League this past September. And so absolutely, once again, go look her up, Danielle O'Toole Trejo. She's awesome. Um, I really did not care about global warming, ch climate change until um, one of her posts weeks and weeks ago s talking about California wildfires, saying if you need any proof of global warming and um, climate change you know here it is here we go and and so on you know and it was definitely quite something you know so I can tell people that I guess depending on what region of the country you live in absolute climate change is definitely probably top five on your list of things that we need to you know get a a gravel on you know but I can assure you in terms of you know, at least for me in terms of in Florida and my biggest, you know, you know, packaging with how I, you know, you know, live life and or what I believe in is the future of life. Like I said before, you know, I think climate change is it definitely is important, but what's more important than climate change, as I've said before, is, you know, everyday mental health, everyday common sense, everyday um, tourism, everyday citizenship and every day loving thy neighbors thyself the way Christ intended it to be, etc. I think those are some of the things that we gotta, you know, put more of a you know caution towards and really need to work better on as time goes forward. Other than that, I would totally tell you that um it makes sense now why you shouldn't and or cannot raise uh taxes on the wealthy. Um and the reason why is because um you know, if it's like saying, especially if we call them a bunch of greedy people anyway, you know, think about it. If you raise taxes on them, they're just going to, you know, cut a, cut, a, cut a couple of jobs from their company. So, you know, so they can recoup that money back from those, ta those, those, those taxes. So, I mean, there's almost no other way to work with, with the corporations other than understanding that. That it's either going to be, you know... It's either gonna, it really is either gonna be you, um, it really is either gonna be when it comes to the, the corporations, it's really either gonna be that. You either let, you either let, let them 
you know, make as much as they, they want to so they can employ more people or put as many regulations on them and they'll hire less people, and which means, you know, you know, and so on. Because I guess a big part of what the wealthy probably will tell you, we're going to make our money regardless. You're not going to cut our wages. We're going to make our, our money regardless. I don't think there's any way you can win, win with that. You know, when, you know, you know, as an everyday citizen, unless you just, you know, built slash started your own company, corporation, and you did it your way. Other than that, I think, uh, and I think that's that's kind of what Donald Trump was kind of talking about last night was you cannot tax these companies more because if you tax them more, they're just gonna ship our American jobs overseas because they're gonna get their money either way it goes, whether they have to cut jobs um, here, you know. You know, you know whether whether they have to cut jobs here or take them overseas. You know, you know they're either way it goes. They're gonna get their money regardless. You know, and, you know, and, and that's kind of what Trump was kind of like trying to tell people. You know, they're either gonna cut them here. You know, cut, cut you know, cut them here, which is hire less people here. You know, and still have and still have a lot of and still have a lot 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 of money, or hire more people overseas and pay them less. So either way it goes, they're gonna they're they're they're, they're either way it goes, they're gonna maintain their status, their lifestyle. They're gonna make their money either way it goes, you know, etc. You know, and and I want people to totally understand it. Uh, you know, I might have to just rewatch that entire debate over because I halfway forgot everything else they talked about in that in that debate. I really did. I might have to just watch it over. But I definitely thank everybody for watching, reviewing, subscribing what I've said thus far. And as I've said a hundred million times, like I say, you, you know, your boy the man NJ to the city here. You know, I love myself. I got so much more music coming out that I really am super duper excited for everybody to hear. You know, because I mean it when I tell you this stuff runs in my veins. Like, and I mean, in terms of ladies and gentlemen, I want to put put it on a scale of this. My song titles not only come from everyday regular life, but they come from a lot of, you know, you know, everyday love and relationships. But they also come from a lot of, yeah, trauma and abuse and a few other subjects that I can name there. But one of the top reasons why you know I'm never going to stop coming up with new songs to make is because, the like I said, the culture demands that you, you know, that you always have something to write about. You know, the changing of times, no matter what industry you're in, what, what you know, what, what, um, what uh market you produce to, you know, and what audience you're promoting to, you know, you know, it just demands we always have something to talk about. We always have something to write about. Other than that, I can tell you, you know, I'm not the hugest of a book enthusiast, but I'm enough of a reader to tell you, especially from sports articles that I read all the darn time. I want people to totally understand this, how I maneuver about the cabin with my work ethic and music, you know, um, uh, I love books, and if not love, I'm at least good enough with books, let alone sports articles, where I can assure you that um, people got to understand, you know, I can literally take apart, you know, I don't know how many books, and again, probably take, probably get another 50 to, to more song titles out of one, whatever book it is, depending on how many pages I'm reading and what sticks out to me is that would be a good song title. And then the way I whip up everything else in my writing, you know, go off on 20 different tangents here and there, stretch all these layers and all these bars out to many different locations. I'm never stopping music. I'm too multi-talented, multifaceted with how I do it, how, you know, what I write about, you know, and where I'm going forward in it. So I'm never going to stop doing music because literally the top thing I'm literally just trying to explain here to you is the fact being the way I take apart books, ladies and gentlemen, is all you need to know. I let alone how many sports articles I read and how many song titles I get from reading sports articles. Whether I read or whether I get it from everyday life experience, I got the song titles. Trust me. And the way I mix, I mix and I you know you know and I scrap, um, I mix and I scrap um, um, uh, keywords within within um, within my um writing style of like you know within my verses. The way I, I mix and scrap. Song, you know, you know, you know, um, yeah, scrap, uh, my uh, verses looking for more song titles. Trust me, I'm never going to stop making music. I promise you, I can literally probably drop a million albums before I die, if not a million and more albums before I die. It just all depends. Like, I really am probably bound to be one of the most 
I I I I don't know whether to say rich, one of the most richest artists ever, if not most more one of the most successful. But I probably that I you know you know whether it all comes in in, in direct money or it just comes in in in, in, in awards or it comes in um, community trust or whatever words I can name there. I am probably bound to be one of the most successful artists ever because of how I do things. I'm infiltrating every industry because I have so many different likes and interests. You know, I love people and I love to learn people's stories and grow with them, you know, you know, as people. So trust me. Yeah, I'm going to be doing this for a long, long time. Oh, and by the way, I want to tell people amidst what's been going on since since March. Every artist, since you can't tour right now. Every artist should be literally working on their next two to three albums, knowing that you can't tour right now. Everybody that just dropped an album this year, you should be working on your next two to three albums, you know, and you, you know within the, the the next however long. You should be working on your next two to three albums, you know, and so on. Because you can't tour, so what else do you have to do with your time, etc.? Other than write and work on your next two to three, I think every 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 artist out there, since you cannot tour right now, you should be working on your next two to three albums, because you know other than just living life, you know, and you know, and you know, you know, with with friends and family trying to stay 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 safe and et cetera, et cetera, other things I can name. Musically, that is musically, you should be you know personally everything I just said, but then musically for every every artist out there, knowing you can't tour right now. You literally need to be, uh, and I mean tour and you know tour for shows, ladies and gentlemen. You can tour for prom prom promotion, more promotion, but you can't tour for shows, ladies and gentlemen. You should be all artists out there. You should be literally working on your next two to three albums amidst you know and you know you know amidst what's still going on on in the world. You should be literally planning out your next two to three albums. You know, I'm not even joking. Or at least that's what I believe you you should be doing, knowing you can't tour. So other than living life and staying c connected with your family and friends and et cetera, et cetera, what else do you have to do? You know, I mean, what else do you what else do you have to do? You can't tour anywhere, you know, or tour for shows. So I don't, I don't, I so I don't think you have any excuse other than just living life with family and and, and friends in your closed um, circles. I don't think you have any other excuse. You know, you know, in your enjoying family time. Other than that, I don't think you have any other excuse for not for not playing out your next two to three albums. That's just me and how and what I I believe the 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 music industry shift um, should now go to since you know since you know the state of the world that we're in, you know, and no one can tour right now. But either way it goes, you know, your boy dropping all the time, and uh, I don't know how many more albums I'll drop.